Now, those of you who know me know that I've been on many medications, and the only ones I truly ever need were meds for binge eating, and, and I haven't really needed any of the other pills they gave me. They've, I've, I've been coerced into them, you know, the antipsychotics and everything else, basically coerced into it, told I needed it, told I had other diagnoses and everything else. Uh, the depression I have felt, I have felt depression in my life, it's been from, you know, my eating disorder. It's been resulted from my eating disorder, basically, you know. But um, I don't think I've needed pills for the eating disorder. I think I've needed to stop eating disorder behaviors to get rid of the depression. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I'm not at all sorry that I took lithium. Not at all sorry. I am sorry that it was not properly monitored. I am very sorry. But over the years, it was not properly monitored. And as a result, I've, I have considerable kidney damage. And even by the age of 27, okay, I was 26 when I was at Gold Farm. By the age of 27, um, by my birthday, okay, by, I'd say, you know, by, 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 by after I'd been out at Gold Farm six months, I was noticing what I now know is lithium induced permanent kidney damage. I didn't know it for another 27 years that that, that 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 had happened and that was going on all those years. I didn't know it until a year ago that that has been going on all those years. <laughs> I didn't even know. But I was told. I finally had it diagnosed. The um, only other useful medication that I've ever been on has been Topamax, uh, also for binge eating. It's an anticonvulsant. Um, as I said, the antipsychotics, the uh, antidepressants, the useful pills, people pop now and then <laughs> when they're nervous. Uh, those are completely useless to me. Uh, some have done very, very bad things to me. Uh, they, some have had very bad side effects on me. ECT has been useless. It helps for a couple of days. I say, hey, I'm better. <laughs> And they say, oh, it did great things for you. And then a few days later, it's completely ineffective, of course. Other people have told me that that same thing happens to them, too. Um, okay. Uh, most talk therapy has not been useful. Uh, uh, I've had an occasional good therapist. Uh, but most therapists are incompetent. They're dishonest. Um, the therapy goes on for too long. Uh, or it fosters terrible dependency. Um, at any rate, what I want to say is, after I left Gould Farm, I went to nursing school. Okay, I went back to Vermont. I went to nursing school, and I was the top student in my class. However, I was kicked out due to mental illness stigma. Yeah. I, I floundered for a while. I did. I really was hurt by what the nursing school did. It was it was discrimination. I could have sued. Another girl got kicked out for similar reasons, and she sued and she won. But I, I didn't sue. I didn't pursue it. Um, I discovered myself as a writer, which was really good. And finally, in, in 1986, like the discrimination was really bad, and I moved from Vermont to Boston. And I want to say that during all these years, I was living in Vermont from, uh, you know, from the time I left Gould Farm until 1986, you know, late in 1986 when I moved, I was seeing the doctor who'd worked at Gould Farm. And I left him in 1986, of course, because I moved to Boston, you know, I wasn't seeing him anymore. And shortly after, okay, he himself, now people don't know this, he himself got kicked out of Gould Farm. That's right. He himself got kicked out of Gould Farm. Now, he apparently, all that time, had been practicing without a license. Now, I found this out, not by rumor, but I'm not going to tell you how I found out but was from a reliable source. Now, you guys know who were there in 
2004. You guys know who he was. I'm not going to say his name. You won't find that in any record anywhere on the internet. You can look up his name. It's not there. It's been scratched from the record. But it's true. He suddenly disappeared. And he was uh, replaced by the doctor that worked for that halfway house. You know that one in Lincoln? Don't know what it was called. But um, he, um, you know, com commuted over to uh, Gould Farm. And he replaced, suddenly, the doctor that had been working for uh, Gould Farm, who disappeared off the scene. Okay? And, uh, without a trace, you know, I myself felt betrayed. But it all made sense, all of a sudden, you know. I never saw any of those folks again. And, but it all made sense, because, you know, he never really took a lithium level from me. And he never did insurance paperwork, you know. My parents would, like, pressure him and say, Hey, you know, can't you do the insurance paperwork? We're paying your arm and a leg. And, you know, he wouldn't do it. And I now realize, of course, he couldn't because he didn't have a valid license, you know. I felt very betrayed. But it's all water under the bridge. You know? It's kind of something I, you know, I look back on and, you know, it's just another one those things and it's in the past and everything but anyway thought I'd let you know I really never saw any of those folks again and um, went on with my life and now I'm a writer I have a couple of degrees and written a bunch of books and everything and I'm still freaking alive guys <laughs> bye bye